Welcome to the Guitar Craft and Other Stuff podcast. I'm your host, Andre Flood. And today we're going to be talking about something that I don't know much about. And that is traditional guitars, boutique guitars. We'll just say traditional, expensive, new, boutique, solid body electric guitars. Now, before we continue, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying in this podcast. So I'm going to say it right now, very clearly. And I'm going to say it again, over and over throughout the podcast to remind you so that no one comments and says something I didn't say. Here it is. I am not saying that these guitars are not worth the money dealers are charging, um, builders are charging. I am not saying they are not worth whatever price people are asking. I'm saying I don't understand. I'm not being fake. I'm not being tongue in cheek. I'm being literal. I'm ignorant. I don't understand. And I'm trying to learn more about it. And I want you all to help me because so many of you have a lot more experience with, than I do in this topic, especially. Because like I said, I don't know a lot about this. And of course, the reason we're talking about this today is because I reach, I recently purchased a Novo guitar um, that I don't plan on keeping. Well, I should say I didn't plan on keeping it. I planned on getting it for the review and then selling it or returning it. But it is so good that I am getting afraid that I'm going to have to keep this guitar, which made me start thinking about all of the other new-ish traditional builders, so to speak. And that brings us to today's topic, because again, I have no clue what drives this pricing scheme. And so... The first thing I want to do is tell you a little bit about what I do understand, what I do understand about guitar prices. And actually, before we go forward, let me just say this. We can, of course, just simplify all of this to supply and demand. X guitar uh, is $5,000. There's only one in the world. And 100 people are willing to pay $5,000. If you rise it to $6,000, maybe only 70 people want to pay. If it's $8,000, maybe only 40 people want to play. If it's $20,000, only five people want to pay for it. If you make it $50,000, only one person can pay for it. Thus, then that guitar is worth $50,000. I understand the basics of supply and demand. But I do want to talk a bit more in a fun way, in an educational way, in a lover of guitars way. I want to learn from that perspective what makes these guitars the price they are. And honestly, really, what this is also about is me trying to understand what guitars I need to buy next, okay? So I'm hoping that by starting this discussion and this price breakdown, you can help me understand what I might or might not like, which can help me buy my next, I don't know, Tom Anderson or Fano or uh, Shore, whatever it may be. I think this, this discussion, if you leave some good comments, will help me know what to buy next. Okay. But like I said, first, let me start with some things I do understand. Right now on screen, for those who are uh, listening to the podcast, I'm looking at a Ken Parker Archtop guitar made in 2012. Ken Parker is, of course, the luthier who invented the Parker guitars. Um, he eventually left that company and began making arch top guitars. He lives, I believe, in New York or in the Northeast somewhere. He has a guitar shop. He builds all of his guitars by hand. These are acoustic instruments. Um, they take a lot of time to build. And... Um, his arch tops sell anywhere from $22,000 each to even more, okay? 
Now I understand why a Ken Parker arch top is worth $20,000, $30,000, $40,000. The first thing, number one, it's an acoustic instrument and acoustic instruments take a different type of skill to create. That's number one. Number two, Ken Parker is a very famous and renowned luthier, and he makes every one of these instruments by himself. Uh, to my knowledge, by himself. Maybe he has an assistant, but for the most part, we can say he makes them by himself. He's a, he's a celebrity luthier on top of that, and he can only make about, you know, I don't know, three, four, five per year. And so if you're only going to make four or five guitars a year, and you don't need the money on top of that, and you're a celebrity luthier, yeah, and it's an arch top, yeah. In fact, if Ken Parker was going to build you a simple solid body electric guitar, he could probably charge 15 grand for that too, because he's Ken Parker. So I understand why a Ken Parker arch top is worth this money. Two reasons, number one, it's an arch top guitar and it requires a different type of education to build. Number two, he's Ken Parker. Parker. Um, you all know me. I'm a black guy, right? If I wanted to become president one day and I wanted, I don't know, coaching in how to become a president as a black person, I could ask um, anybody, right? If I could ask some random person who, you know, knows the political science field, they might charge me, you know, $200, $300 an hour for their knowledge and coaching. But if I went to Barack Obama and said, can you teach me? He might charge me $5,000 an hour, $10,000 an hour. Why can Barack Obama charge me that much money? Because he's the only person in history to be black and a U.S. president. Therefore, his knowledge and his, his, his time, his celebrity status and his knowledge related to that topic, he can charge anything he wants. Ken Parker can charge anything he wants for a guitar. Okay, moving on to the next example. So we're not talking, oh, so we're not talking about arch top guitars today. We're not talking about any type of, you know, acoustic guitar to any degree. Okay, our next example. This is a Benedetto guitar. It's essentially a Benedetto, Benedetto version of a 335. For those who don't know, Benedetto, Benedetto is a um, builder, luthier, Specializes in jazz instruments. This guitar sold for $6,000, $6,500, excuse me. Similar to the Ken Parker example, but not as extreme. So this is a semi-hollow guitar. It has a center block. We could say it's easier to build than an arch top. And we can say, okay, it's easier than a full hollow body guitar. So we're going to make it a little bit cheaper. And... Uh, Benedetto guitars, it's not just one person building, it's a it's a group of skilled luthiers building, so it's not just one person, so they can make more than four or five guitars a year. Okay, that brings the price down a little bit more. Nonetheless, it's a very small group of skilled people. They're making a semi-acoustic instrument at a very, very high level for a very select audience. This guitar is $6,500, let's just say $7,000. I understand why it's that price. We're not going to talk about these type of guitars today either. Okay? Moving on. We're, we're, we're just going to do this. We're going to go down the line and fully understand this. Now we're looking at a Fender guitar. Fender Esquire from 1967. Now in terms of, well, the price we'll just say is $1,700. Uh, sorry. $17,000, I should say. Now, a Fender Esquire is basically just a Tele with a bridge pickup only. This is a very simple guitar to build. Um, there's not much to it besides a slab of wood. And I'm exaggerating a bit. We're going to go into details about what matters for a guitar in a second. But just for our argument's sake... Let's say that as far as electric guitars go, the telly is essentially the simplest thing you can do, right? Grab a piece of wood, grab another piece of wood, bolt them together, throw some strings on it, throw a magnetic pickup in it, you got a telly. 
Now this particular tally is $17,000 because it's from 1967, made by Fender. So in this case, we're paying for not the fact that it's a telly. We're paying for the place in history that this guitar holds. This is no longer just a guitar. This is a historic artifact that you can also play on stage live. That's why it's $17,000. I understand the price. We're not talking about any vintage guitars today. None of those, okay? So... In terms of, so anyway, those are our examples of what we're not talking about, okay? What are we talking about? We're talking about solid, bo solid body, essentially brand new guitars that were made in the last, let's just say, I don't know, 10 years. Solid body electric guitars that were made in the last 10 years that were not made by just one person, okay? Now, I have a list of things I thought about that should contribute to the price of one of these guitars. And let's talk about that for a second. In your mind, you can imagine a telly, okay? So we have the body, which is made, usually made out of wood. We'll just say wood, a wooden body, a wooden neck, a neck joint. Of course, different types of wood are going to be of different costs, fine. If you're someone who believes in tone woods, I personally don't, but if you do, that's totally fine, okay? Still, a piece of wood can only cost so much. In addition to it potentially being a tone wood, if you believe in that, the wood may be pretty. It might have a flame. It might have a burl, so on and so forth. That contributes to the price. And of course, the neck joint itself contributes to the price. Is it bolt on? Is it neck through? Is it set neck? Etc. That's the first thing. Then, of course, we have hardware. We're going to say tuners, a nut, a bridge. The most expensive tuners, right? I mean, maybe not the most expensive tuners, but you can get a pair of very, very high quality tuners for $200, let's just say. Of course, you can get a pair of high quality locking tuners for even $100, period. But we're going to, and, and if you are a dealer and you're buying a, buying them in bulk, they'll be even cheaper than that. We'll just say $200 for the expensive tuners that are locking because they're gold. Fine. You can get a great nut for probably 30 bucks, but we'll even say 50 bucks for a great, perfect nut. And we're going to keep a simple bridge, simple telly bridge. I don't know. 50 bucks, 70 bucks, let's say $100. So, you know, in terms of the hardware, we're talking less than $500, definitely. Way less than $500, let's say $250 for the hardware. After that, we have the electronics. In terms of a telly, single volume, single tone, three-way switch, two pickups. I mean, if you were going to get two hand-wound pickups from a really good hand winder. He can charge whatever he wants, I guess, but or whatever she wants, but we'll just say, okay, we'll just say high quality Seymour Duncan pickups, all right? High quality Seymour Duncan pickups. We'll round it up to $200. We'll say another $100 for pots and switches and wiring. Again, I'm inflating these numbers like crazy. But when it comes to a telly type guitar, that's really all there is. Of course, I don't want to underplay the craftsmanship because if I put together your telly, even if I have the best, best parts, if I build it and put it together, it's going to be worth nothing because I'm not a builder and I suck at that and it wouldn't be a very good guitar. If someone else puts it together, however, if someone from Defender Custom Shop puts it together, it's going to be worth a lot more because you're paying for their experience, their expertise, their craftsmanship. And depending on who the craftsman is, sometimes you can't even put a value on, a value on that, right? If Paul Reed Smith himself builds your guitar, it's going to be a damn good guitar. You're going to pay a lot of money for it. And you should because he's worth it. 
Okay. So we'll, we'll have that as a separate category. And then we have this other category that I like to call special features. Now, in terms of my biggest experience with electric guitars and prices, we're talking solid body guitars. I'm, and again, and modern guitars, me, I'm used to the idea of paying for things on a guitar as special features and that inflating the price. For example, if you wanted, I don't know, uh, fancy pickups, right? Um, if you wanted fancy pickups that are hand wound by one person, you might pay $40 per pickup. Those pickups are a special feature. Maybe you can only get them on one particular type of guitar, right? Um, things of that nature, special features. Okay. So what are we looking at right here on the screen? Right now I have the Kiesel Guitar Builder. I'm using Kiesel as our archetypal example because in my experience, if you're talking about a custom built guitar to your own spec, okay? Custom built to your own spec in terms of quality, speed, professionalism, craftsmanship, and price. I have personally never found a company that hit all of those things at the perfect spot like Kiesel does. You can, you can get a custom built guitar from Kiesel. It can get to your house in, you know, three, six months, whatever, whatever time it is, depending on how busy they are. And in terms of quality, pure quality, uh, fret work, um, tolerances, tuning stability, playability, it's going to be hard to find a guitar that is objectively better. Now, you may notice, if you look around, well, you don't, you can't see the rest of my room, so I'll just tell you, right now, I don't own any Kiesel guitars. But the reason I don't own any Kiesel guitars has nothing to do with the quality of Kiesel. It has everything to do with what I want in my life right now, and my preferences right now. But if you were to say to me, I can build you a guitar that is a better quality than Kiesel, that has better features and better customization than Kiesel for half the price or two thirds the price, I'd have a hard time believing you. I'd have a hard time believing you. And if you said, I'm going to charge you two times or three times the price of a Kiesel guitar. I'd have a hard time paying for it unless it had a special feature that made the guitar worth that money in my mind. And in my mind, there are a lot of boutique, new, vintage style guitars that are double triple the price of a Kiesel custom built guitar. And as someone who's ignorant to the traditional guitar thing, remember, I don't know about this stuff. I just started getting into this. I'm trying to understand why they are that price. I'm not saying they're not worth that price. I'm saying I want your help in understanding. Maybe it's the craftsmanship. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting away from our topic. Let's, let's get back to focus here. So on the screen right now, I have specced out a Kiesel guitar into basically a simple Tele model, a Tele without a pick guard, okay? To make things more expensive, I added a very expensive quilted maple top. I added gold hardware as well. So this is not the most complicated Tele in the world, but it does have a very expensive quilted maple top. It does have gold hardware. It does not have a pick guard. It has a nice fretboard wood. Apart from that, this is just a standard telly, a slab of wood. We also have an arm contour. Right now, 2022, October, Kiesel would charge me $2,000, $2,019. We'll just round it down to $2,000 to make it easy. So what I'm saying is Kiesel is going to build me a telly with a quilt, a beautiful quilted maple top, 
gold hardware, stainless steel frets, locking tuners, gold locking tuners. The veneer is going to, the headstock is going to match the, the body. This is a beautiful guitar. I can promise you if I order this guitar, it will be very, very high quality. I can promise you I won't be able to find the guitar that is objectively better playing. Okay? Maybe I can find a guitar that's a, a tiny bit better, a tiny bit better playing. Maybe. I'm not even sure. But this is our standard. Beautiful top, $2,000 Tele style guitar. Now I have already bought some guitars that are more than this, that are more than this electric guitars, solid body guitars. And I'm going to tell you why. And that goes back to our idea of special features. Okay. There are some companies that do things that they only they can do. And for that, you have to pay a premium. I have to pay a premium. I understand that. What's one example right now we're looking at a VGA Sean Lane signature model. This guitar is about $3,000 right now. Now, number one, VGA has a patented uh, 9010 or 1090, whatever it is, neck. The neck never moves. It will never move. And there's no trust rod. It doesn't need adjustments. It's a perfect, never moving, always set up neck with stainless steel frets. You buy it once, it's that way forever. It's perfect. No other company does that, or I should say very few other companies do that. No one else does it exactly like VGA. You're paying for that feature. They have a special, um, a special two point trim that's on needle bearings instead of a knife edge. Not a huge deal, but only VGA does it. No one else does it. Technically speaking, you're paying for that as well. The neck itself has a flat fretboard radius. It's very, very hard to find a company who's going to sell you a guitar with a flat fretboard radius. It's just a solid body guitar. But what we're talking about is special features. And the things that I just mentioned, the style of the neck being a, uh, being Kiesel's proprietary neck, the flat fretboard, the bridge, you're paying for all of that stuff. You're paying a premium because of those special features. I have paid a premium for those features. I understand the cost. Now we're looking at an electric guitar built by Steve Klein, known as a Klein guitar. This is hard for me to describe on camera uh, for, for the audio people, but this is essentially an electric guitar that has a body shape that is made to tilt the neck upward. Um, it, it, it's an ergonomic guitar with a very strange, unique body. Now, to my knowledge, Steve Klein built this body style. He invented it, to my knowledge. He pretty much makes these by himself. They're all custom to order. Um, and the special feature here is the body shape. There's a couple other people who make this guitar, but Steve Klein is the guy who kind of made it popular. And as a result, the guitar is $5,400. I understand the price. It's a special feature. One more example. Of course, we have our Parker Fly guitars. In this case, we have a lot of special features. Of course, number one, the, comp the company no longer exists. It's a guitar that's wrapped in carbon fiber and vacuum sealed, if you will, and has glued on frets and it has a proprietary bridge. It is packed with special features and the company no longer exists, so you can't buy one new anymore. So if you find one in very good, uh, very good condition, it can run you $3,000. Ton of special features. That's the price, and that's why. I understand all of these examples. These are all modern guitar examples. These are all my wheelhouse. Now let's move to some things that I don't understand, that I want your help figuring out, because I don't know. Final time. I'm not saying these guitars I'm going to show you now. I'm not saying they're not worth the price. I'm saying I don't know why they're worth the price and I need you 
in the comments to please help me understand. Let's do it. Now, the first guitar we're looking at right now is a Shure S-U-H-R Classic T. It's a Tele style guitar, sunburst finish. You can see some wood coming through. It is $3,000. Now, as we look at this guitar, one piece swamp ash, a pretty good wood, but nothing crazy. Palfaro back, Rosa fingerboard, normal neck for the most part. Um, we have their normal um, neck shape, a tusk nut. We know where to buy those from. That's a graph textile nut, not too expensive. Uh, six, uh, 6105 uh, frets pretty standard frets we know what those frets are we know where to buy them we know how much they cost we have goto tuners regular knobs I mean it's a telly let's look at some pictures I mean it's a beautiful telly it's beautiful very nice we're looking around the features Traditional tuners. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of contouring at the upper frets, maybe. Can't really tell. But for the most part, we're looking at a Tele. It's from 2004, so it's almost 20 years old already. It's $3,000. What makes this guitar $3,000 when I can get a brand new Kiesel Tele with a better top for $2,000 and more expensive hardware? If I were to spec out this guitar on the Kiesel Builder, I can probably get it for $1,500, $1,600, $1,700. Let's just say $1,700. This guitar is almost double and I'm wondering what that cost is. Does it really play that much better? This is not a guitar that's aged. At least I don't believe it is. Okay. This is not a worn guitar. This is made to look new. I don't understand. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm saying someone please explain to me in the comments why a Shure guitar, that's a Tele, a standard Tele, but it's a Shure. What makes this worth a thousand, a thousand two hundred dollars more than a Kiesel Tele? Let me know. Example two. Now, right now we're looking at a Nags, K-N-A-G-G-S, a Nags guitar. It essentially looks like a double cut. It looks like a mix between a Les Paul Special and a SG. So it has a Gibson type body shape, double cut design, white paint, pick guard, volume tone knob, three way switch, P90s, two P90s. Mm, it has a cream gloss relic. Okay. So there is a little bit of relicking, very, very minor relicking, just on the edges. Okay. Nice headstock, all of that stuff. Now, let's look at some of these specs. There's not a lot of specs for this particular guitar, but we'll just look. Gloss relic finish, double cutaway, solid body, flat top. So no carving on the top. Uh, 24 and three quarter scale length, set neck, slight V. No, uh, it's described as a no frills, all mahogany, solid body electric built for tone and tone it has. These guitars feel so right out of the box. Amazing setup and feel from the Nags team. Brand new. So this is a new Nags guitar. $2,650. The neck joint is nothing special. 
P90 pickups, even if they're custom made, you know, you can get custom P90s. It's not the hardest thing in the world to do. There's a very, very minor relic. Now the headstock design is quite nice. It looks like they have some, uh, some hand inlaid, a hand inlaid design for the logo and for the signature of the name. So I'm sure it costs some extra money to do this type of beautiful work on the headstock. Um, but that would just be cosmetic. And I'm looking around the guitar. I just, I can't figure out. I haven't played this guitar. Having not played the guitar, I can't talk about anything else really. Now, if you've played a Nags guitar, maybe you can explain to me why a very simple guitar, stop tailpiece, no bridge, I mean, no, no floating bridge. From what I can tell, no special features apart from the craftsmanship, right? Crafts, high craftsmanship is an important feature that we should pay for. But we pay for high craftsmanship when we buy a Kiesel for $2,000. And this nags is $3,650. And it doesn't have a nice top. Now, if I remove the top from the Kiesel, it'll probably be $1,500, $1,600. So my question is, does this, is this nags more than twice as good? And if not, what are the special features that are driving up this price? Because I don't believe it's one person building these guitars. I do believe it's probably a small team. Okay. So what's contributing to the price of this next guitar? I'm not saying it's not worth the price. I'm saying if you have a Nags guitar, please leave a comment so I can understand. Next example, and this is a really big one. This is, this is a really big example. We have a Tom Anderson guitar. Now, to be completely honest, I don't know if Tom Anderson builds by himself or if he has a team. I'm not exactly sure. So please, if he has a team um, that builds with him, please disregard some of what I'm saying. But assuming he has a, assuming he doesn't have a team, Okay, assuming it's not just one person by himself building guitars. Let's try to understand this price. What are we looking at, first of all? We're looking at a Strat, basically a Strat style guitar. A very beautiful blue finish with a red uh, tortoise pick guard. Humbugger, single, single configuration, so super Strat style. One volume, one tone with a special extra mini switch that probably does something pretty cool. Five-way switch, nice bridge, right? Two-point trim. And, you know, bolt-on guitar, two bolts. But what we're looking at basically is a Super Strat. We're looking at a Super Strat that's very, very similar in body shape and visible features to a regular super strap made by Fender. That's what we're looking at for the most part. So let's see. Blue finish. We're looking at the uh, specs now. So maple neck, but a black heart fretboard. Okay. Maybe the black heart is worth a lot of money, potentially. Nickel hardware. Near mid condition. One and five eighths nut, nut width. Heavy frets. Um, the Buzz fine teen tuning system. I don't really know what I know what that is, but you know it's it's a pretty niche thing. We won't get into too much discussion about that. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty much exactly how I described it. It's a super strat. Now, if Tom Anderson built all of his guitars by himself then I understand why it's $4,000 and I understand maybe it should be even more than 4,000, you know, but if this is a team of builders making a super strat, 
without ever without having ever played a Tom Anderson guitar, and that's the important thing. Without ever having played a Tom Anderson guitar, I don't understand the price. If you have a Tom Anderson guitar, please tell me in the comments because I might want to buy one, but I need to know which one to buy and I need to know why to buy it. All right, let's move on. So we're looking at a Fano guitar, all right? It's blue, baby blue. It has a nice little relic. It's a Les Paul shape. I believe Les Paul Studio shape because it's flat, no contouring. We have, so we have a Les Paul Studio shape. P90 in the neck. Then we have a Tele pickup in the bridge, single coil, and a Tele style bridge as well. So we're mixing a Les Paul Studio and a Tele. Then we have the, the Tele control plate, you know, the vertical line with the volume tone and the three-way switch. Um, it does have a nice little relic on it. Pretty, pretty substantial relic, I would say. Bolt on design. And there is some nice contouring at the heel joint for the bolt on, not a standard bolt on. So that's going to, to, to increase the price a bit as well. But what we're looking at is essentially a Les Paul Studio, the cheapest version of a Les Paul in, in, in terms of Gibson pricing, with Tele Electronics and front looking, uh, Tele on the front, I should say, Electronics and all of that stuff, um, and a really nice relic job, okay? And $3,250. So, you know, actually, I might have said that wrong. I believe it's a Les Paul Jr. body, not a Les Paul Studio. You know, I'm not a big Gibson person. I don't know the exact body styles and all of that stuff. Give me a break. Les Paul Studio, Les Paul Jr. It's a Les Paul that's flat and not arched on the top. Okay. With some tele electronics and stuff, $3,250. The question remains, what makes this Fano guitar worth this much money? What am I paying for when I spend $3,250 for this guitar instead of $2,000 for a Kiesel? What am I paying for? Please tell me in the comments because I don't know. I need your help. We're going to look at one guitar to end things off. Final guitar. This is a Novo. Cirrus. I think it's called, I think it's pronounced Cirrus. T. T for Tele. 2002. Excuse me, 2022. This year. So it's a Novo Cirrus T model. So it has that Novo shape. But uh, so in the Novo shape, got it. We have a tele configuration in terms of the electronics and the bridge. Fine. Fretboard had fretboard is beautiful. We have large block inlays. Looks like some really expensive mother of pearl. But apart from that, you know, it's a Novo. It has that Novo body. Now, as you know. As you know, I now understand, or I now have played a Novo guitar, and I quite, I love the Novo guitar that I played, that I have right now. I love it so much that I'm doing this podcast because I want to buy more guitars like it. That's how much I love it. And if you were to ask me, is a Novo guitar worth $4,000, $5,000? Would I pay $5,000 for a Novo? Yeah. <laughs> I I think I would. I really think I would. But at the same time, I haven't tried a Fano. I haven't tried a Shure. Not yet. Not for an extended period of time. Could I tell you that the Novo that I play plays twice as good three times as good as a Kiesel. No, I can't tell you that. 
I will be lying. It's not true. But the reason I would pay $4,000, $5,000 for a Novo, now I'm not saying I will, I'm saying theoretically I would, is because having picked up a Novo and played it for several hours now, well, several days now, I can tell you I've personally never felt a guitar like that. Now you watch my Novo review, I'm assuming, or you can go watch that and you can hear me gush about the Novo and why it's amazing. I won't rehash all of that here. But I'm also somewhat ignorant to this field. So it's very possible, right? It's very possible that I only love the Novo because I've only played the Novo and Gibson, right? And Fender. For all I know, tomorrow I play a Shore and I love it even more than a Novo. And then I start saying, well, why would I pay $4,000, $5,000 for a Novo when I can pay $3,000 for a Shore? I don't know. I don't have the experiences yet to tell you these things. So I'm asking you for this big favor to help me get through this next hurdle of my traditional guitar journey. If you've played any of these guitars, if you've played any traditional guitars that you believe are worth more than $2,000, I don't care what brand it is, Novo, Fender, Gibson, I don't care what brand it is, tell me the brand in the comment section. If you're not um, on the YouTube channel, write me, andrefloodmusic at gmail.com. Tell me the brand. Tell me why it was that much money so I can consider buying one for myself. I need to know the features and what justifies the price so that I can potentially make a purchase to one of these companies. Is it the Relic job? Are there special features that I just can't see that I need to know about? Because I'll tell you one thing. If it's just a paint job, I'm not buying it. You know, there are some Novos that are $5,000. Just because they have a really pretty sparkly paint job, I'm not doing it. No, not me personally. I'll pay $4,000 for the quality. I'm not paying an extra $1,000. I'm not paying an extra 500 for paint. I'm not paying an extra, I'm not paying extra money for paint almost ever if it's more than two, $300, okay? Certainly not for $1,000. I'm not saying the paint isn't worth that. I'm not saying the craftsmanship of the paint job is worth it. I'm saying me personally as a buyer, I won't be paying it. So if you like to pay more money for a fancy paint, beautiful. I'm not judging you. Just include that in the comment as well so I understand for myself when I'm buying what I should be looking for, what, should, what I should be considering, how much these things cost. And we'll take it from there. And uh, if we can get some detailed comments or emails, and uh, that can lead me to some thoughts, and I'll purchase one of these guitars and I'll try it for the channel. Absolutely. I'll try it for the podcast, for the experience, for uh, guitar craft. Okay. So that's all for today. Uh, thank you for indulging me on this very strange journey of learning about traditional guitars as a non-traditional guitar buyer. I'll talk to you soon.